Hello Internet, my name is the Golden Stalfos, and today I'm going to talk about Super Mario Odyssey. Now I've never really been a huge fan of the 2D Mario titles because I'm not good at them, uh, but I've always really enjoyed the 3D titles. I'm not super great at those either, but they're easier and they have more fun things going on, and you can play them in random orders and stuff, so it's good. In fact, I did make videos talking about some of the 3D Mario games. I didn't particularly care for Sunshine all that much, and Galaxy 2 feels like it should have been a very short DLC for Mario Galaxy, but got expanded into a full-length game in a way that didn't quite work. But whatever, you know, overall it's fine. So when I heard that there was a new game, and that you didn't have to jump out of levels every time you collected a star, I was hyped. But... I didn't own a Switch until fairly recently, so I wasn't able to play it until fairly recently. And I also suspected that while it did seem to be a great game for speedruns and challenge runs, it might not be as good for casual play, because it might have kind of the same problem as Breath of the Wild, where they really hyper-focused on making it speedrunnable and didn't really put a whole lot of effort into everything else, but just sort of filled out a checklist with insane amounts of content to keep people distracted from the fact that none of the content is super great. And if anything, this game fares kind of worse than Breath of the Wild in that regard, because one, it doesn't take very long to complete all of the content, and two, most of the content is fucking pointless. Hey, carry this nut over to a pot and wait ten minutes? Great gameplay, excellent puzzle, super challenging. <laughs> In the post-game, you can just buy infinite moons, and the game doesn't even tell you that. It just lets you buy them. What? Why? Why can you even buy moons in the first place? Also in the post-game, talk to this NPC and get a moon for free just because you talked to the NPC. <laughs> or talk to the NPC as a particular capture that the NPC wants to see. That's it. That's all you gotta do to get a moon. Just just walk over to an NPC. Sometimes the moons are just sitting there in the open and there's no puzzle or challenge whatsoever. It's just jump for it. It's not even a hard jump. Just just jump. Lots of times there's just something in the environment that's glowing and you have to interact with it and then boom, a moon pops out. Except sometimes the glowing thing isn't a moon. Sometimes it's just Goombas or coins or whatever which makes it feel cheap right like oh here's a glowing spot that i can ground pound let's ground pound it and sometimes you get a moon and sometimes you get a ring of enemies around you and sometimes you get coins and so it just feels like a crapshoot <laughs> now that's not to say that the game doesn't have any interesting challenges or puzzles that lead to good moons because it does it has lots of them but it just also has a bunch of filler bullshit that doesn't need to be there and doesn't add to the gameplay experience at all. Some of the repeated moon categories are fine, like the music notes, like sure the challenge of running across to get the music notes is more or less the same each time, but sometimes you have to do it with a special capture or whatever, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. It's different enough to make it fine. Um, racing the Koopas is also very repetitive but you know you're doing it in a different environment each time and the race is a little different each time so it's fine racing the koopas the second time around but this time the ai is slightly smarter is less fine but whatever but it really does feel like for every unique interesting moon there's at least three that are a complete waste of time there's several very interesting and fun boss fights throughout the game, but not as many as you might expect considering the previous entries in the series. And some of the bosses are just duplicates. Actually, there's a duplicate for each boss where it's slightly harder, but not really. Because um, <laughs> you fight it in the exact same way, there's just like one extra obstacle, which doesn't really change the fight that much. And once you've beat it the normal way and you know the pattern and everything, fighting it the slightly harder way doesn't feel harder. You know, like, I died several times to almost all of the first bosses and beat all of the harder versions first try. So like, eh? It's also a very linear game, especially compared to previous entries in the series. 
you know, in Mario Galaxy, there, there was a clear progression where you unlock groups of three or four different worlds at a time. And, you know, there were literally dozens of fairly unique worlds you could go to, you know, and, and the same thing in 64 where you had access to an entire floor of the palace and then you accessed a second floor and then a third floor and you could go to all of these different places at once. And there were, again, more levels than in Odyssey even if they aren't as big levels there were more of them so you got more unique scenery and environments more unique gameplay mechanic opportunities and more boss fights not to say that the boss fights were necessarily better back then just that there were more of them and I do accept that there's an argument for quality over quantity but I think when you have fewer worlds by like half or a third but you have 10 times as many collectibles, you fucked up something. <laughs> Even if each world in Odyssey is five times bigger than a world in the N64 version, that doesn't really make up for it because one, there's a lot of empty space in these worlds, two, they're not all that big, and three, it means less unique environments that you get to visit, which was one of the main appeals of the 3D Mario games. So many unique environments. And also, all of that considered, it didn't even take me three days to complete the game. <laughs> like, I've beaten Galaxy multiple times, and it would still take me longer to complete Galaxy than it did to complete Odyssey. And that's... sad. <laughs> it's a surprisingly small game compared to its predecessors, and it's weird. They try to obfuscate that by saying there's over 900 different moons to collect, but again, they're not really that different. And I think focusing on the number of collectibles rather than the amount of areas you have or the amount of challenges you have for those collectibles is kind of dumb, you know? By the time I got through to the post game, I had already gotten like 400 collectibles, like way more than what you could get in Mario 64, but I had also only played for like 10 hours. <laughs> less than that, actually. And it wasn't, it wasn't actually 400, it was a little less than that. But the point is, <laughs> it was way too many. More than it was possible to get in several previous titles, and yet... I'd barely started <laughs> collecting, you know, I hadn't gotten everything that was available before you enter the post game. And then I did get to the post game and it was just another big checklist of more shit to do and it was just... Ugh. So tedious. But again, the amount of collectibles isn't as important as how you collect them. And also, it's kind of bullshitting you with the number, since every boss fight is worth three moons instead of one, and every world has a boss, and every boss has a second version, and realistically just reducing the moons from a boss from three to one would cut down the number by almost a hundred. That's how much they're inflating it. And I do kind of like the idea that fighting a big boss is worth more than completing a small puzzle, but at the same time, like, you're just artificially increasing the number of collectibles without increasing the amount of content, and that's dumb, and I hate it. I also want to take a minute to complain about the controls. So, there's a lot of things you can do in this game, and that makes it very popular with speedrunners, because once you get really, really good, you can pull off some insane tricks. However, there are several issues with the control scheme that make it really hard to get that good. So for one thing, it has the same number of control options as Super Mario 64, even though there are more buttons and more things that you can do in this game. A Switch controller has four face buttons, four shoulder buttons, well, two buttons, two triggers, but whatever, um, two joysticks, and a D-pad. Of course, on the Switch, the D-pad is just a second set of face buttons, but whatever. However, in Mario Odyssey, you have three controls. You have two buttons to jump, two buttons to throw your hat, two buttons to do your ground pound stuff, and that's it. 
You also have two buttons to center the camera for no reason because you have a joystick to control the camera so you don't need to center it. And if you want to do any advanced maneuvers like a long jump or a cap dive, you have to press two buttons at once. Even though we could have made those dedicated actions with their own buttons because we have so many buttons on this controller. Also, when you're in the air, the best way to maneuver and get more ground is to do a dive. However, the dive button is the ground pound button plus the hat throw button, which means that if the game doesn't register your clicks correctly, instead of diving forward, you'll just ground pound into oblivion. And I think that in a platformer, having the move forward in the air button be the same as the plummet to your death button is kind of fucking stupid, <laughs> especially since you have so many other buttons available to you. Now I know why they did this. They did this because of two player mode. They want you to be able to control Mario with just one Joy-Con. However, this is still bullshit because one Joy-Con has two shoulder buttons, four face buttons, and a joystick meaning you still have more buttons than you're using. It's also worth noting that in two-player mode, some of your normal functions don't work because your hat is being controlled by the second player. So you effectively only have jump and ground pound. Now you might be asking, okay, what functions would you map to the other buttons? Well, for one thing, I would make it so that diving in the air and ground pounding are not the same button. But I would also probably add a sprint button, because while your movement speed is okay, it's not fast enough that I don't want the sprint button. And there isn't a sprint button unless you're in a 2D section where you can't throw your hat. And it's... <laughs> Especially considering that's been a staple of the Mario franchise since forever. Not having it feels... aggravating. Also, currently there are several functions mapped to motion controls, even though literally everyone has pointed out that a handheld system shouldn't have motion controls because you're literally moving the screen and that's awful. Most people made an excuse for this by saying it's superfluous stuff you don't really need, but actually you do need it a lot. <laughs> For one thing, there are several unique ways to throw your hat which can increase your ability to get around the environment, but for another thing, after you've thrown your hat, you can shake the remote to make it home in on the nearest object that it can attach to, which is very useful. And for a third thing, every single object that you capture has three controls. One that's activated by your hat throw button, one that's activated by your jump button, and one that's activated by moving the controller. Sometimes the action that's activated by moving your controller is the same as one of the other functions, but sometimes it's not, because fuck you. And there are even certain moons that you can't access without using the special motion control ability of the captures. So I would map those things to a button instead. <laughs> and even with those two or three additions, you'd still have buttons left over. So maybe Mario could have a dedicated attack button that is different from throwing his hat because sometimes you A, can't throw your hat and B, don't want to throw your hat in order to deal with an enemy. Also, this isn't really related to Mario Odyssey, but the Switch controllers suck. The Joy-Cons are way too small, the buttons are way, way too mushy and unresponsive for my taste. Also, when you're playing it without the special controller add-on, your hands, or at least mine are, my hands are just digging into the camera joystick while I press the face buttons and it's awful. So yeah, the Joy-Cons suck. Also, I don't know if this is the infamous drift that everyone's talking about, but it feels like 90% of the time the direction my hat flies when I press the throw button is only slightly related to the direction I'm pressing on the joystick, and more often than not it'll just be like off to one side by a bit, and that's frustrating. <laughs> So yeah, it needs a better control scheme, or at the very least, the option to remap some of these controls. And it needs better content, because... I mean, the good stuff that's there is really good, 
and I'm not going to say it's not there, but it's kind of crowded out by all the waste of time bullshit that's also there. So I'm overall not super impressed with Mario Odyssey. It's okay, but I really wouldn't hold it up next to its predecessors. Maybe next to Sunshine, but that's not saying much. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next life. Laters. Hey, thanks for watching that video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stupid YouTube crap. Also, you can find me on Twitch, at the Golden Stalfos, obviously. On Wednesdays, me and my girlfriend stream playthroughs of games she's never played before, and that's a lot of fun. And on other days, I will sometimes randomly do a challenge run or something if I'm feeling like it. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter to make extra sure you get video notifications. And I have a Patreon, if and only if you have money to burn. But to be fair, if you have money to burn, you should also consider some charities. There are always a few linked in my description, just in case. Oh, and be sure to leave positive comments down below for my girlfriend who volunteered to edit my videos for free because she's awesome. And yeah, thanks for watching.